Welcome to Raffledini Vineyards. As you can see, it's uh, fairly early in the morning. The early morning fog has not yet lifted. These young men and women out in the vineyards have been at it since seven o'clock this morning. They're picking petite Verdot grapes, about two, two and a half acres of petite Verdot. And as the day moves on, they'll be picking Montepulciano grapes and just talking to uh, Chris Nelson, who's the winemaker uh, at Raffledini. And Chris says they'll be harvesting until noon. Just a little bit about Raffledini Vineyards and you can learn a whole lot more. If you'll go on to raffledini.com, Raffledini with two S, the vineyards, the winery, are the creation of Jay Raffledini. A little later on, I'm gonna introduce Chris Nelson uh, to you, and he's gonna teach us all, not just a little bit. Chris is gonna teach us a lot about uh, winemaking. He has two degrees, one in viticulture, which is the growing and harvesting of grapes. Another degree in enology, which is the process of of making wines and blending wines. We'll take you up in the skillet and glass helicopter and fly you over property and let you see the beautiful vineyards, the beautiful villa up behind me that is where tastings take place. This is where wines are sold and where you have a few glasses uh, as well. We may be able to take you upstairs where Jay and Chris put on presentations, cooking demonstrations, and teach us about tasting wines. We're going to have a good day today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it and I hope you are too. So I'm Chris Nelson, the winemaker at Rappellini, and I wanted to show you guys a little bit of these processes we do here. So classic grapes are picked from the field. We have a, about one ton of Petit Verdot out there. This is a very fresh cluster. You can kind of see how it's plump and moist. There's a lot of tension in the berries. This literally just came in from the field like 20 minutes ago. So contrast that with this is the style of drying grapes from northeastern Italy and it is called appassamento. And you can kind of see the difference here on this tray of grapes. So we fill these trays with grapes, okay? They look like this when the process starts. As after five days in 95 degree weather in, in a room with a dehumidifiers, you turn it into to something kind of a little more raisiny. It's dimpling, it's not very strong, the, the berries are not nearly as, as sort of turgid as these. And basically, this process allows us to sort of change the flavors a little bit in our Petit Verdot, but it, the dehydration process um, allows the bricks to go up so we can make a, a wine that has um, has a secondary sort of characteristics and flavors instead of sort of bright blackberry fruit and petite verdot mm -hmm. has, has a lot of floral notes. You get a wine that has a hint more um, like a plum or a bit of a raisin note. This is a very labor intensive process to do a passamento. Um, the grapes get touched, you know, once they're picked into 25 pound yellow lugs, then they get laid out on trays, then they, the trays get put on the racks, there's 40 per rack, then it gets weighed, then it gets moved into the drying room, then it stays in the drying room, comes out, gets weighed again, then gets brought into here and put into the tank. As grapes start to ferment, they are an anaerobic, well the yeast that are fermenting the sugar is turning sugar to alcohol, which is what most people care about when we're looking at wine, it, they're anaerobic. So by that means they don't need oxygen. So this is a fermentation. You can see in here, this is, the grapes have all floated to the top and they've formed a cap. So I'm gonna put my hand through here and I'm getting to wine right about there. So that was, that's about how deep the, the cap is. Now, why is the cap important? Well, the cap has the grapes and in the grapes is all the flavors, the, the tannins, Everything good that you want that gets into your wine comes from these. Now, if you look at this tank, you've got a cap that, that's, you know, a foot deep. So it's only interacting with, say, the bottom 10% of the whole mass. So what we want to do every day, or multiple times a day, is take this tool and we're going to turn everything over so we mix it up. So that way we can continue to extract as much good stuff as we can from the grapes before we press the wine. And so when we press the wine, 
We're gonna take these grapes and put them into our press, which is right behind us. And then they're not gonna be picking up any more tannin or flavors from the grapes themselves. So it'll all be in the aging. So the idea is to capture as much as we can get from these grapes during the fermentation process. Now, you can't see this at home, but I put my arm in here and I can tell that this fermentation is coming to an end because the temperature has dropped. Um, I'm not seeing a ton of CO2 venting off the top of the tank and I can just feel the temperature. So I know that this wine is wrapping up. So we might be pressing this wine in the next day or so, but it's, it's been in here. Um, I didn't write the date down, but it came in probably about eight days ago. So it had a two day cold soak and then it fermented for about six days. And right now we're just here at the end of the process. So what I'm trying to do here is turn over the top. You see how it dries out on the top of the mouse? So what we want to do is get everything turned over. So it's kind of like a big, well, soup, a very chunky soup. But this is what we're going to do two or three times a day. Now you are going to see some whole clusters in here. Okay. I, I did a mix in this process. So I took fresh grapes directly from the vineyard. I distemmed them through some of this equipment behind you. You'll see this a little later in the day. But I also did a passamento, which is a procedure we use at Raffledini a lot to sort of concentrate our wines. So there is half a ton of, of a passamento in here, plus one ton of regular grapes. So it's a mixture of fermentation. So it's gonna give me some bolder wines than if I just did whole berry by itself. The drying process that we use for a passamento um, changes the flavors, concentrates it. So you're gonna get more fresh flavors from the, from the fresh grapes, like cherry, cranberry, but you're gonna get more of a dried note from the apossamento fruit. So the end result is hopefully a pretty complex Sangiovese wine, which will be our Sangiovese Classico. And that's one of the four red wines we make. So what Dickie's doing again is mixing up the cap. You can see he's doing a good job. It forms a bit of a brick, almost like a cake. The cap could be very compact and thick. And so we're gonna break it up, mix it up. And it's, it's a little bit of a workout. Don't be afraid there, Dickie. So then you're gonna build off the hole. So you get your hole and you're gonna just pull up. There you go. So when we were in here today, I picked up a bin with about 500 pounds of grapes. I dump it into the hopper and then we slowly feed the grapes along the conveyor belt. And that's our first line of sorting. Todd, he was slowly feeding us clusters. They go across the conveyor belt then they head toward the elevator and they go up into the distemmer. There's a little hopper in our distemmer. But basically what we're trying to do is remove the, the rachis and the stem, which holds the berries together. We're gonna remove that so the stems come out the side, the berries fall down, then we have a shaker table, a vibrating table. And that's where we're then trying to pull out these little jacks. We call them jacks. They're basically a broken off parts of the stem. And then we used a must pump to pump the grapes into a wood fermenter, which is open top. It's a very classic Italian style. When we're talking about fermentation techniques, there are a number of different ways to do things. Um, earlier this morning, we saw an open top tank. It's stainless steel, and it's not gonna impart any sort of additional tannins or anything like that you would get if you ferment in our wood fermenters, which are right over here. So different techniques, different styles, but in general, you're gonna see a little more tannin pick up with an oak fermentation because the oak tannin molecules are very similar to the grape tannins and then they can polymerize. So they, they basically form chains. Um, and that's actually gonna happen during the whole aging process where tannins start off really small. So when you have a young wine and you drink it, it interacts with the front part of your palate. And as that wine ages in barrel, the palate, the, the tannin chains, they polymerize, they get longer, and as they get longer, they interact in different parts of your mouth. So a young red wine is gonna be very crisp and, and refreshing, but it's not gonna have a lot of depth and, and its tannins are gonna be aggressive, if that makes sense. They're gonna be, um, they're not gonna be refined. So the aging process allows oxygen to get into the wine through the barrel staves, and that allows this polymerization process. So things uh, continuously develop. When you hear about this, that wine is alive. So um, I know some people love bourbon in this group of people. And so the idea is those, those, those alcoholic beverages don't change much once they're put into bottle, but, but wines continue to develop and age. And that's one of the beautiful things about them. 
So now we are in the boat tea room, which is B-O-T-T-I, boat tea. The boat tea is one of these beautiful 660 gallon barrels behind me. These are straight from Italy. The producer is Gamba from a little town called Asti. So we have 15 of these particular, these are all for aging. Okay, so most of the wines here are from the previous vintages. This ginormous barrel right here fits 11 of these little barrels, okay? So this is your standard barrel. Uh, it's 55 gallons for whiskey, 60 gallons for wine, and then you have one that holds 11. So, uh, but now we're here talking about some of these barrels. So this is um, a grape called Petite Mansang. It's a new grape for us at Raffaldini. We're looking to, to use it to to add some, um, well, eventually to go into our sparkling wine program and then to beef up uh, another wine called Dessaria. So Petit Mansang is very versatile. It has a very high TA, which is the mode of total acidity. Um, so it can also ripen in the higher, so you can make a number of different styles of wine. You could pick it low bricks with a lot of acidity and use that to balance out, say, a, a warmer, rounder uh, white wine like Vermentino, or you can pick it um, later on its own, we'll have a much higher bricks. So say it could be 26, which could give you an alcohol of, you know, 15%. So you, you, can, you can do a lot with this grape. And this is our first vintage. And so I'm actually barrel fermenting this. So that's Petite Mansang. And then if you want to come a little closer, I'm also making white wine. And this is also an Italian technique. It's a skin contact white wine. So basically when we saw Dickie doing a punch down earlier today, um, this is the same concept. So this is white wine. Um, and if you see when I turn it over, it's, you're going to see a much, it starts to oxidize a little bit, but you'll see a fresher yellow color. It's been in here for about 15 days. Um, so it's pretty much done fermenting and I'm actually going to put this lid back over it. And then I'm going to actually wrap it with pallet wrap and allow it to stay on its skin for another 15 days. So it'll be 30 days total. And again, this is to add a little more phenolics. So you're getting, the phenolics are the basis of your tannins and your antioxidants. That's all the good properties that wine has besides the alcohol. But uh, the phenolics, uh, I'm trying to pick up a little more mouthfeel and body by leaving it on the skins. And this is a grape called Fiano, which is another new grape for us this year. And it will be blended together with a little bit of Vermentino. So these, these two bins came in about a week ahead of this. So they are done for many, and as I said, I wrap it with power wrap. The idea is to minimize oxygen contact, but just allow it to sit on the skins and to maybe become a little bit more full bodied. It seems to me that this style right here is a little more reminiscent of a true Italian Vermentino. Um, I found it to be really interesting. I did some experiments last year and I liked this so much, I'm doing a lot more of it this year. We also have aging here, a little Chardonnay, four barrels of Chardonnay. Um, four barrels of Vermentino stainless steel, two more barrels of Fiano, and another stainless steel tank of Fiano. So this is all fermentations for this harvest 2020. And these wines will all be bottled and released next, uh, well, be the earliest will be the spring and then by late summer. So this is all actively fermenting. The reason they're in this room is because I can control the temperature. I keep it at 58 degrees and I'm gonna have long, slow fermentations to sort of maximize the aromatic potential of the wines. So the hotter you ferment at, the higher the temperature. Like on the red grapes out there, we're fermenting up to 90 degrees, 93 degrees. Then here I'm trying to keep it, the whole fermentation below 60 degrees. So it's slow and steady. It, you're not burning off the aromatics, you're trapping them in the wine. Um, and so it's a, it's a patient process, but it's, it's worth the time. And then so when we saw all the Bodies around here, so these are all holding various lots from 2018 and 19. And then this is also the event. We do a lot of events in this room where we'll set tables up in here and do blending trials and tasting. It's a very nice place. Now we're at the, the villa, just outside the tasting room on the piazza. In front of me is a tasting flight. They taste from the top down, and this just happens to be uh, uh, at the top a, a Vermentino, which I just had a nice taste of, even though noon has not gotten here yet. And then Desiree is a um, full-bodied Vermentino that is fermented in oak. And the next one down is a, a rosé. This is called Fiori, it's a uh, dry rosé. Second one down is a Montepulciano Reserva. 
a 2018, and the last one is a 2018 Il Falco, which is a Sagrantino based blend. What I'll do just to show you that uh, I uh, think I'm okay to have a another little taste. Mm. Very fine for this time of morning. Salute.